Hello everybody, this is the 44th lecture for IELTS of the Sahida al -Qasir. Today we are taking Book 15, Academic, Test 3, Passage 3. Why fairy tales are really scary tales? Some people think that fairy tales are just stories to amuse children, but their universal and enduring appeal may be due to more serious reasons. The questions say, we will start from uh, 27 to 31, complete each sentence with the correct ending A to F below. Write the correct letter A to F in boxes 27 to 31 on your answer sheet. 27 in fairy tales details of the plot. 28. Tarani rejects the idea that the useful lessons for life in fairy tales. 29. Various theories about the social significance of fairy tales. 30. Insights into the development of fairy tales. And 31. All the fairy tales analyzed by Tahrani. A. Those are the choices. May be provided through methods used in biological research. B. Are the reason for their survival. C. Show considerable global variation. D. Contain animals which transform to become humans. E. Were originally spoken rather than written. F. Have been developed without factual basis. Faces. Okay. Let's see 27. In fairy tales, details of the plot. Let's see which one uh, we should choose. Okay, let's start with the first paragraph. People of every culture tell each other fairy tales, but the same story often takes a variety of forms in different parts of the world. Okay? 27. In fairy tales, details of the plot. The answer will be C. Show considerable uh, global variation. Why? Because it says... Uh, of uh, people of every culture tell each other fairy tales, but the same story often takes a variety of forms in different parts of the world. That means global variation, which means some differences. Okay, let's see 28. 28. Tehran rejects the idea that the useful lessons for life and fairy tales. Okay. Let's go on with paragraph A to C, if he talks about that. If he doesn't, we move immediately to the, second, to the next paragraph. Um, in the story of Little Writing Hood that uh, European children are familiar with, a young girl on the way to see her grandmother meets a wolf and tells, tells him where she is going. Okay, we notice here that he's giving an example. So, whether you go on with the example or you just move on to see the end of the example, then after the end of the example, you move on. Okay, now we see the wolf runs uh, and gets dressed in grandmother's clothes and a uh, wolf uh, swallows up uh, the grandmother. Well, okay, to the end of the paragraph, of this paragraph, is just an example. So, no need to go on reading with it, you move immediately to the following paragraph to check uh, 28, I mean this branch of this, the answer of this one, this question which says Tarai rejects the idea that the useful lessons for life in fairy tales. We check this answer. So let's see. The universal appeal of these tales infrequently attributed to the idea that they contain cautionary messages. In the case of Little Riding Hood, to listen to your mother and avoid talking to strangers. It might be what we find interesting about this story is that it's got this survival relevant information in it, says anthropologist Jamie Tahrani at Durham University in the UK. Okay, let's reread it. It says, 
the useful lessons for life. The universal appeal of these tales is a frequent attributed to the idea that they contain, okay, here is the lesson, they contain cautionary messages. In the case of Little, riding, little Red Riding Hood, to listen to your mother and avoid talking to strangers. It might be what we find interesting about this story is that it's got this survivor relevant information in it. Okay, so Tehrani rejects the idea that the useful lessons for life in fairy tales B are the reason for their survival. So, why? Because he mentions that the survival is in it the survival which he says it might be what we find interesting about the story is that it's got this survivor relevant information in it so he rejects the useful lessons for life in fairy tales um, are the reason for their survival okay now let's check 29 various theories about the social significance of fairy tales so Let's see various theories about the social significance of fairy tales. Let's see. But this research suggests otherwise, we have this huge gap in our knowledge about the history and the prehistory of storytelling, despite the fact that we know this genre is an incredibly ancient one, he says. That hasn't stopped anthropologists, folklorists, and other academics. So here we have some theories, devising theories to explain the importance of fairy tales in a human society. Okay, uh, now Tahrani has found a way to test these ideas, borrowing a technique from evolutionary biologists. Well, I see nothing here to be to be important to tell the truth. But I will recheck. I will read the following paragraph and double check to check if I'm right or I need to redo this one uh, to reread this one. Okay. Uh, to work out the evolutionary history, development, and relationships among groups of organisms, biologists compare the characteristics of living species in a process called uh, polygenetic analysis. Okay, now I need to go back to those theories. So, uh, let's go back to these theories. That hasn't stopped anthropologists, folklorists, and other academics devising theories. Ah, sorry. Uh, we have an important thing here to explain the importance of fairy tales in human society. So, uh, in this case, we have a 29 various theories about the social uh, significance of fairy tales. The answer is F have been developed without factual basis. Why? Because they say theories to explain the importance of fairy tales in human society. Now, Tahrani has found a way to test these ideas to borrow, uh, borrowing a technique from evolutionary biologists. Okay, so they show uh, they have been developed without factual basis. Those are the theories. Those theories suggest that. Okay, let's move on. 30 insights into the development of fairy tales. Let's see. To work out the evolutionary history. Okay, development and relationships among group, groups of organisms. Biologists compare the characteristics of living species in a process called polygenetic analysis. Tehrani has used the same approach to compare related versions of fairy tales to discover how they have evolved and which elements have survived longest. Okay, so uh, if we just uh, check this one here, 
is about insights into the development of fairy tales, the answer will be A. May be provided through methods used in biologist, biological research. Why? Because he's saying the evolutionary, the evolutionary history, that means the development and relationships among groups of organisms, biologists compare the characteristics of living species in a process called polygenetic analysis, which means may be provided through methods used in biological research. This is what he means. And he goes on by saying Tehran has used the same approach to compare related versions of fairy tales to discover how they have evolved. That means how they have developed and which elements have survived longest. Okay. The last one, all the fairy tales analyzed by Tahrani. Uh, let's see the following paragraph. Tahrani's analysis focused on Little Riding Hood and its many forms, which include another Western fairy take, uh, tale known as uh, The Wolf and the Kids. Checking for variants of these two tales and similar stories from Africa, East Asia and other regions, he ended up with 58 stories recorded from oral traditions. Okay, that's the first, that's the first uh, one, which says that uh, were originally spoken rather than written, but let us check more. Once his polygenetic analysis had established that they were indeed related, he used the same methods to explore how they have developed and altered over time. Okay, I need to go on to check if my answer is right or not. First, he tested some uh, assumptions about which aspects of the story later least as evolves. Indicating their importance, folklorists believe that what happens in a story is more central to the story uh, than the characters in it. That visiting a relative only to be met by a scary animal in disguise is more fundamental than whether the visitor is a little girl or three siblings or the animal is a tiger instead of a wolf. Okay, so far I'm not sure of my answer. Why? Because they haven't mentioned clearly that uh, uh, that he he depended on the spoken stories rather than the written. Although it says he ended up with 58 stories recorded from oral traditions. But let us be more sure. Let us go on with the other paragraphs to see. If I find nothing about that, I will choose this one indeed. But let us be more sure. Why? Because we want to be sure. Because one answer, one correct answer could change everything. The following paragraph says, However, Tahrani found, a, uh, found no significant difference in the rate of evolution of incidents compared with, the, uh, with that of characters. Certain episodes are very stable because they are crucial to the story, but there are lots of uh, other details that can evolve quite, quite, quite freely, he says. Neither did his analysis uh, support the, uh, the fear that the central section of a story is the most conserved part. He found no significant difference in the flexibility of events uh, there compared with the beginning or the end. But the really big surprise came when he looked at the cautionary elements of the story studies of hunter-gatherer folk tales suggest that these narratives include really important information about the environment and the possible dangers that may be faced there. Stuff that's relevant to survival, he says, yet in this analysis such elements were just uh, as flexible as seeming uh, trivial details. What then is important enough to be uh, produced from generation to generation? That answer, it would appear, is fear. 
bloodthirsty and gruesome aspects of the story, such as the eating of the grandmother by the wolf, turned out to be the best preserved of all. Why are these details retained by generations of storytellers when other features are not? Tahrani has an idea. In an oral context, okay, there's something related to oral. In an oral context, a story won't survive because of one greater teller. It also needs to be interesting when it's told by some who's not necessarily a great storyteller, maybe being swallowed whole by a wolf, then uh, cut out of its stomach alive is so gripping that it helps the story remain popular no matter how badly it's told okay here is another reason because he's uh, I, i'm sure now uh were originally spoken rather than written when he says in an oral context that's the second reason okay no need to go on because i have two reasons here okay now so we move on to the other questions okay now we come to the questions from 32 to 36 it says phylogenetic analysis of little red writing hood uh, Tehran used techniques from evolutionary biology to find out if gap existed among 58 stories from around the world okay we come to the paragraph of 58 it says Tahrani's analysis, analysis focused on Little Red Riding Hood in its many forms, which include another Western fairy tale known as the Wolf and the Kids. Checking for variants of these two tales and similar stories from Africa, East Asia and other regions, he ended up with 58 stories recorded from oral traditions. Once his uh, phylogenetic analysis had established that they were indeed related indeed related so in this case we check for a word that is that means related from the choices we have links so the answer will be D okay he also wanted to know which aspects of the stories had the fewest gaps as he believed these aspects would be the most important ones. Let's see. First, he tested some assumptions about which aspects of the story alter least as it evolves, indicating the importance. Okay, we come to evolves. Evolves has one meaning, which means it is uh, different. That means variations here f so uh, 33 will be f which means different evolves okay contrary to other beliefs let's go on folklorists believe okay this is other beliefs that what happens in a story is more central to the story than the uh, characters uh, than the characters Oh, uh, sorry. Uh, in it, the, uh, that visiting a relative, only to be met by a scary animal, is in disguise, is more fundamental than whether the visitor is a little girl or three siblings, or the animal is a tiger instead of a wolf. Let's move on with the questions to check the choices. Contrary to other beliefs, he found that some gap that were included in a story tended to change over time. So we have events, B in this case, because some events were included in a story tended to change over time. How? Because uh, whether the vista is a little girl or three siblings, or the animal is a tiger instead of wolf. That means the events are a bit different here. Okay, let's move on. And that the Middle East, the middle of a story, seemed no more important than the other parts. He was also surprised that parts of a story would seem to provide some sort of gap were unimportant. Let's see. However, Tahrani found no significant difference in the rate of evolution of uh, incidents compared 
with that of characters certain episodes are very stable because they are crucial to the story but there are lots of other details that can evolve quite freely he says neither did his analysis support the fear that the central section of a story is the most conserved part he found no significant difference in the flexibility of events there compared with the beginning of the end nothing related to the question let's go on with the other paragraph but the really big surprise came when he looked at the uh, cautionary elements of the story studies on hunter-gatherer folk tales suggest that these narratives include really important information about the environment and the possible dangers that may be faced there stuff that's relevant to survival he says yet in his analysis such elements were just as flexible as seemingly trivial details trivial details what then is important enough to be reproduced from duration to duration okay so he's talking about the danger the possible danger was faced there uh, is trivial and trivial details so uh, the answer in this case will be uh, let's check the answers here um, okay it's, it talks about danger and trivial details so it's a warning the warning sort of warning were unimportant okay here yeah. the aspect that he found most important in the story survival was gap the answer it would appear is fear okay so in this case the most important aspect is fear fear that means g horror so the answers from 32 to 36 will be d f b c g okay now we move to questions from 37 to 40. the choices 37 what method did jamie tahrani use to test his ideas about fairy tales when discussing tahrani's views jack sibes suggests that okay let's see what method to work out the evolutionary history development and relationships among the groups of organisms uh, biologists compared the characteristics of living species in a process called uh, phylogenetic analysis Tehrani has used the same approach to compare related versions of fairy tales to discover how they have evolved and which elements have survived longest uh, let's go on to check Tehrani's analysis focused on Little Red Riding Hood and its many forms which include another western fairy tale known as the wolf and the kids checking of variants of these two tales and similar stories from Africa, East Asia and other regions he ended up with 58 stories recorded from the from oral traditions from oral traditions let's check the answers now he compared oral and written forms of the same stories no he looked at many different forms of the story of the same basic story okay he looked at our related stories no he contrasted the development of fairy tales with that of no so b will be the answer 37 is b okay let's go to 38 why does tahran uh, sorry 38 when discussing tahrani's views jack zibes suggests that okay let's see jack zibes of the university of minnesota uh, minneapolis is unconvinced by tahrani's views on fairy tales even if they are gruesome they won't stick unless they matter he says he believes that uh, a perennial theme of women as victims in stories like little red riding hood explains why they contain to free to feel relevant okay so let us check 58 
A. Tehrani ignores key changes. No. B. Stories which are too horrific are not always taken seriously. No. C. Tehrani over uh, emphasizes the importance. Of, no. Features of a stories only survive if they have a deeper significant significance. Let us see. Let us reread it. He believes. Uh, sorry. Uh, Tehrani's views of it is even if they are gruesome, they want to stick unless they matter. He says he believes uh, the perennial theme of women as victims in stories like Little Red Riding Hood explains why they continue to feel relevant. But Tehrani points out that although this is often the case in Western versions, it's uh, not always true elsewhere. Okay. So the answer will be D. Features of stories only survive if they have a deeper significance. That that explains the view. Okay. So, uh, 39 says, Why does Tehrani refer to Chinese and Japanese fairy tales? Let's see. In Chinese and Japanese versions, Often known as the tiger grandmother, the villain is a woman, and in both Iran and Nigeria, the victim is a boy. So, it's A to indicate that Jack Sipes Fieri is incorrect. Okay, 40. What does Matthias Clayson believe about fairy tales? Let's see. Matthias Clayson at Aros University in Denmark is not surprised by Tehrani's findings, habits, and moral change. But the things that scare us and the fact that we seek out entertainment that's designed to scare us. Okay. Uh, those are constant. He says, Clayson believes that scary stories teach us what it feels like to be afraid without having to experience real danger. So the answer will be A. They are a safe way of learning to deal with fear. Why? Because he says Clayson believes that scary stories uh, teach us what it feels like to be afraid without having to experience the real danger. So it's a safe way to to uh, to learn uh, how to deal with fear. Okay, thank you for watching this lecture. If you liked it, please press the button of uh, of subscribe. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. If you have any criticism, ask them in the comments too. Thanks for watching this lecture. That was with Sahid Al-Qasir with you.